Spicy Medtech here, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about a topic that falls under clinical chemistry, arterial blood gas analysis, or ABG. So arterial blood gases, or ABG, is the measured parameter to determine blood alkalinity or acidity by measuring its pH. It also measures gases like oxygen and carbon dioxide in the blood and makes use of these different parameters. The first parameter would be pH, which tells us how acidic or alkaline an arterial blood sample is. The next is PaCO2, which is basically the measurement of carbon dioxide in the sample. Now, I want you to relate CO2 with your respiratory system, your lungs. And remember that the more CO2 present, the more acidic the sample. Carbon dioxide is not an acid in itself. But the reason why we measure this is that carbon dioxide is directly proportional to the number of hydrogen ions in the sample. And the more hydrogen ions, that makes it a more acidic sample. The next is HCO3, or bicarbonate. Now, I want you to relate bicarbonate with your kidneys. And I want you to relate bicarbonate with the base. So, the more bicarbonate in your blood, the more alkaline your blood will be. And lastly, the PaO2, which is the measurement of oxygen pressure in the blood. Now, I will not delve deeper into PaO2 because it is not required in ABG interpretation, but it does give a clearer picture of the patient's condition. But for this video, I will not be including PaO2. It does, however, determine hypoxemia. Now, some references may have other normal values for these parameters, but for this video, we will be using this, 7.35 to 7.45 for pH, PaCO2 will have 35 to 45, bicarbonate will have 22 to 26, and for PaO2, we have 80 to 100. Now, let's tackle the basics. Anything with a pH less than 7.35 would be considered acidic. Anything with a pH above 7.45 would be considered alkaline. Now, PaCO2 and PaO2 are both regulated by the lungs. So let's call it the respiratory factor. And the bicarbonate, or the HCO3, is regulated by our kidneys. And we shall call that the metabolic factor. Now, the homeostatic nature of our body has these two organs or organ systems work hand in hand to maintain the pH of the body at 7.35 to 7.45. Now enough of that, let's get into the three steps of ABG interpretation. Step 1. Determine if it is an acidosis or an alkalosis. An acidosis would mean that the pH is below 7.35 and an alkalosis would mean a pH of above 7.45. For this step, all we have to do is look at the pH. Now for ABG problems, the only time that the pH would be normal if it is fully compensated or if the patient is absolutely healthy without medical conditions or whatsoever. For example, you get a pH of 7.10. You check if it's greater than 7.45 or less than 7.35. And in this case, it's less than 7.35. Therefore, a pH of 7.10 would indicate an acidosis. So how about a pH of 7.55? Is it less than 7.35? No, therefore, it cannot be an acidosis. Is it normal? Still no. Is it greater than 7.45? Yes, therefore, it indicates that the patient is in an alkalotic state. Step 2. Determine if it is a metabolic or a respiratory alkalosis or acidosis. And for this step, we only have to check for CO2 and ACO3, which is the carbon dioxide and the bicarbonate. A quick recap. PaCO2 is to lungs and ACO3 is to kidneys. More CO2, more acidic, and more ACO3, the more. Now, if you see that the PaCO2 is abnormal along with the pH, while the HCO3 is normal, we could easily deduce that the problem is respiratory.
But what if the CO2 is normal while the pH is abnormal along with the HCO3? We could easily deduce that the problem is metabolic. Now for a few examples. Now let's tackle a few examples. A pH of 7.18, CO2 of 49, and an HCO3 of 25. Let's whip up our normal values. Normal values of pH would be 7.35 to 7.45, PaCO2 is 35 to 45, and HCO3 is 22 to 26. Is the pH below 7.35 or is above 7.45? It is below 7.35, so we could conclude that it is an acidosis. How about the CO2? Is it in normal ranges? No, because it is at 49, while the normal value is at 35 to 45. How about bicarbonate? Is it normal? Yes, it is at 25, and the normal values are 22 to 26. So the problem must be respiratory. Another example, a pH of 7.55, a CO2 of 40, and a bicarbonate of 29. Is it an acidosis or an alkalosis? It is above 7.45, therefore it is an alkalosis. Let's check CO2. Is it normal? Yes, it's normal. How about bicarbonate? No, it's above the normal ranges, therefore it is abnormal. So we can call this a metabolic alkalosis. Now let's move on to our third step. Identify if it is compensated or uncompensated. Now we must ask ourselves, is it a full compensation or a partial compensation? Remember when I said earlier that these two systems, the lungs and the kidneys, work hand in hand in order to maintain a stable and balanced blood pH, this is where compensation comes in. So if your kidneys are causing a problem, your lungs would make up for it, and vice versa. It is important to note that full compensation happens if the pH is normalized while the two values, HCO3 and PCO2, are abnormal. This is due to the compensatory mechanism of the body. Otherwise, if the pH PCO2 and HCO3 are all abnormal, we could call it a partial compensation because the body was not successful at bringing the pH back to its normal levels. If there's something wrong with the lungs, your kidneys will also make up for it. This can be determined by just looking at the HCO3 levels, the pH, and the PCO2 levels. And this is how. Let's say there's something wrong with your lungs, and it's causing a respiratory acidosis. Now the kidney will try its best to compensate for that by increasing the levels of bicarbonate in your bloodstream. Now if it's in a respiratory acidosis, you expect your pH to be lower than 7.35. And adding more HCO3 would cause an increase in your pH, trying to make it as balanced as possible putting it in a range between 7.35 to 7.45. Now when compensating, we expect that the levels of HCO3 would go above its normal level because of course we would have to overwork it in order to compensate for our broken respiratory system, right? Same goes for respiratory alkalosis. Now in respiratory alkalosis, our PaCO2 levels are below 35 causing our blood to be more alkaline than it is acidic. Now what can the kidney possibly do in order to make the blood more acidic to compensate for the alkalinity of the blood caused by the respiratory alkalosis? The kidney will reduce the amount of bicarbonate because bicarbonate makes the blood basic and less of that would make the blood more acidic, thus maintaining a homeostatic state. How about if there's something wrong with our kidneys? Let's say we have a metabolic acidosis. So in metabolic acidosis, the bicarbonate levels are not enough to maintain a pH of 7.35 to 7.45. So what can the lungs do to make sure that it becomes a more alkaline environment? Of course, it will reduce the amount of PaCO2 in your bloodstream. That's how it compensates 
for the acidosis by removing the cause of the acidosis in the respiratory system. Now, compensation for metabolic acidosis is evident when we see that the CO2 levels are below 35. Now, how about metabolic alkalosis? Now, in metabolic alkalosis, it means that there's an overproduction of bicarbonate by your kidneys. So, what can the lungs do in order to combat its alkalinity? Now, the lungs will increase the amount of CO2 levels, thus making the blood more acidic, and it will overall reduce the pH of the blood by the overproduction of bicarbonate. Thus compensating for the malfunction, trying its best to maintain a pH of 7.35 to 7.45. Let's take a look at this example. A pH of 7.28, HEO3 of 26, and PCO2 of 55. Step 1. Determine if it's an acidosis or an alkalosis. Now with uh, normal values of 7.35 to 7.45, 7.28 falls short of 7.35, thus making it an acidosis. Now let's take a look at our HCO3. Is it normal or abnormal? The normal value is 22 to 26, putting it at a normal level. How about the PCO2? The PCO2 level is at 55. The normal values is 35 to 45, making it an abnormal level. So we can conclude that it is respiratory acidosis. Now let's see if it's compensated or uncompensated. Is the pH normal or abnormal? It's abnormal. So we can rule out fully compensated respiratory acidosis. Let's check their HCO3. It's normal, right? Therefore, the kidney did not make an effort to compensate for the problem with our lungs. So, we can easily call it an uncompensated respiratory acidosis. Because we can clearly see that our bicarbonate levels are still normal. Next problem, pH of 7.35, a bicarbonate of 47, and a PCO2 of 52. Is pH normal? Yes. Is the ACO3 normal or abnormal? It's abnormal. Is the PCO2 normal or abnormal? It's also abnormal. So what do we do in situations like this? So as we can see, the pH is 7.35, the bicarbonate is making the blood more alkaline, and the PCO2 is making the blood more acidic. So uh, looking at this data, we don't really know who is compensating for who. Is it the kidney compensating, compensating for the lungs? Or is it the lungs compensating for the kidneys? So in times like this, what would be the best way to tackle this problem? The first thing you always have to do with every ABG problem is to look at the diagnosis and history. But for the sake of uh, theoretical problems like this where we don't really have history or diagnosis, we could look at the acidic side or the alkaline side. So for our normal ranges, which one is closer to alkaline and which one is closer to acidic? So uh, 7.35 is much closer to the acidic side than 7.45 and 7.45 is closer to the alkaline side than 7.35. Knowing that, we could rule in an acidosis. But in real life scenarios, we really have to look at the patient history and the diagnosis so we could easily confirm if it's an acidosis or an alkalosis in situations like this. So to theoretically solve this, let's take a look. It's an acidosis, right? So a heightened HCO3 would mean that a heightened HCO3 would contribute to a blood's alkalinity. So it must be the heightened PCO2 that's causing the acidosis. So, the HCO3 is abnormal, so we could say there's compensation, and the PCO2 is contributing to the acidosis. So we can say it's a compensated respiratory acidosis. And by looking at the pH, 7.35, it was fully and successfully compensated. So we could say that it was a fully compensated respiratory acidosis. 
because even though that the ACO3 and the PCO2 were both abnormal, the lungs and the kidney were still able to work together to obtain a pH of 7.35 to 7.45, thus retaining it at its normal value. So that would be all for arterial blood gas analysis lecture. Uh, disclaimer though that this lecture is made strictly from a medical technologist's point of view. I do believe that physicians and respiratory therapists have other ways of coming up with interpretations for arterial blood gas analysis. So for now, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned. Mm, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And please, if you want any other topics to be covered on this channel, please leave it down in the comment section below.